this morning's papers settle something that we have been debating for a while. कि आज का बार में एक हमारा जो discussion है उसका settle हो जाते हैं. On the front page of Indian Express, it says, I quote, Police say to the court, those held are part of an anti-fascist plot to overthrow the government. Which means, of course, that the police are admitting that we have a fascist government and so we, we can only overthrow it with an anti-fascist plot. So that's a good thing. At least we have some clarity. <laughs> to belong to a minority is a crime. <coughs> to be murdered is a crime. To be lynched is a crime. To be poor is a crime. To defend the poor is to plot to overthrow the government. When the Pune police conducted simultaneous raids on the homes of well-known activists, poets, lawyers, priests, across the country and arrested five people, high, high profile civil rights defenders on ludicrous charges with little or no paperwork, the government would have known it was stirring up outrage. Now I want to say that the government has already known that if they will do this work, there will be a very big reaction. And they have done this reaction lately. किया है उनको पता था कि ये प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस होगा उनको पता था कि हम लोग सब आगे आएंगे फिर भी उन्होंने ये किया तो वो लोग क्यों चाहते थे कि इतना बड़ा एक रिएक्शन हो जाए रिसेंट एनालिसिस ऑफ रियल वोटर डेटा एज वेल एज द लोकनीति सी एस डी एस ए बी पी Mood of the nation's survey have shown that the BJP and the Prime Minister Narendra Modi are losing popularity at an alarming rate for them. अगर आप ये सारा जो analysis देखेंगे, तो बहुत ही जल्दी से उनका population popularity नीचे जा रही है. और हमें पता है 2002 गुजरात से लेके जहाँ पे भी दंगे हुए हैं. सबसे खतरनाक माहौल यही होता है जब रूलिंग पावर पार्टी का पावर और पॉपुलैरिटी गिर रहे हैं सब सबसे बहुत खतरा का माहौल बनता है। This means we are living in dangerous times and there will be a ruthless and continuous attempt to divert attention from the reasons for this loss of popularity and to fracture the growing solidarity of the opposition. From now to the elections, it will be a continuous circus of arrests, assassinations, lynching, bomb attacks, false flag attacks, riots, and pogroms. We have learned to connect the approach of elections with the approach of all kinds of violence. Abhi, hamen pata ki democracy mein jab election aate hain, tab hinsa badhti hai. Divide and rule to bhot purana ek tarika hai. But now it's divert and rule. We will not know from when, from where, and how, and what kind of fireball is going to fall on us. So before I speak about the arrest of the activists and lawyers, let me just reiterate a few points that we must not allow our attention to stray from, even while it rains fire, and strange events befall us. So, जैसे ये हो रहे हैं रेस हरेस लेकिन हमें वही चीज दौड़ाना दोबारा जो वो हमें डिस्ट्रैक्ट करना चाहते हैं। It has been one year and nine months since November 8, 2016, when Prime Minister Modi appeared on TV, perhaps with the without the knowledge of his own cabinet, and announced the policy of demonetization of 80 percent of the currency in circulation. His own cabinet seems to have been taken by surprise. Now the Reserve Bank has announced that 99% of the currency has been returned. The Guardian has done a story saying that demonetization likely reduced the GDP by 1%, likely caused a loss of 1.5 million jobs. 1.5 million jobs. Just printing the new currency is thousands of crores. After demonetization came the goods and services tax, 
structured in ways that have dealt a body blow to small and medium business. While the poor have suffered enormously, several corporations close to the BJP have multiplied their wealth several times over. Businessmen like Vijay Malia and Nirav Modi have been permitted to decap thousands of crores of public money while the government looked away. What kind of accountability can we expect from this? Is sabka natija kya hoga? Kuch nahi? Zero? Matlab, logon ke pocket maar hua hai. Unho ne ka ki har, har, har aadmi aur aurat ke atok pe pandra laak milega. Agar BJP sata me aadmi hai. Kuchka unho ne jarib logon ke haat me pocket me haat dal ke pocket maar hua hai. Through all of this, as it prepares for the 2019 election, the BJP has emerged by far the wealthiest political party in India. Outrageously, electoral bonds ensure that the source of the wealth of political parties can remain anonymous. So they have the money, they have the EVMs, they have the voter lists. We have to see what to do about the coming election. <coughs> We all remember the fast in Mumbai at the Make in India event inaugurated by Modi in 2016 <laughs> when a massive fire burnt down the tent, the Make in India tent. But the real fire, the real fire of Make in India is the new Rafael, <coughs> the Rafael aircraft carrier deal. The Prime Minister once again, the Prime Minister once again announced this deal in Paris against all known protocols without seemingly the knowledge of his own defense minister. We know the bare bones. A deal had been put in place in 2012 under the Congress-led UPA in which the government would buy planes assembled and those would be assembled by Hindustan Aeronautical. But instead you have a new deal announced by the BJP the opposition has said that there is corruption on an unimaginable scale and have accused the government of giving a con contract to Anil Ambani's reliance, which has never built a plane in its life. The op opposition has demanded a joint parliamentary committee pr probe. Can we expect one? Or must we swallow this whole fleet, fleet of planes along with everything else and not even gulp? Third, the investigation by the Karnataka police into the mass murder, the assassination of Gauri Lankesh has unveiled several Hindu right-wing organizations like the Sanathan Sastan. What has emerged is the existence of a shadowy, full-blown terror network with hit lists, hideouts, safe houses, with arms, with ammunition and plans to bomb, kill and poison people. How many of these groups do we know about? How many are working in secret still? With the assurance that they have the blessings of the powerful and probably even the police. With the elections coming, what plans do they have in store for us? What false flag attacks? What real ones? Where will they be? In Kashmir, in Ayodhya, in the Kumbh Mela? How easily they can derail everything? with some minor or major attacks that are then amplified by the pet media houses. To divert attention from this, the real threat, we have the hue and cry over the recent arrest. Fourth, the speed at which education institutions are being dismantled. JNU has been taken apart in front of our own eyes. We have seen how both the students and the teachers have been discredited. We have seen defamation campaigns by mainstream media against students, lies, false videos. All of it has led to, as Prashant said, the beating up of Kanhaya Kumar, the near attempted assassination of Omar Khalid. Who is going to be responsible for this? But even more serious than this is the rapid privatization of education. This policy is actually nothing else but the re brahminization of education. By privatizing education, by raising the fees, 
<coughs> Even the smallest benefits of reservation are now being denied to SC, ST and OBC candidates. They are being pushed out at an alarming pace. So this, this whole thing of Hinduizing textbooks um, and turning it over to corporate is, is, is going to create a level of cretinization that we cannot recover from. And so now I come to the recent arrest. All of us, all of the people here have spoken about them, so we know how illegal they are. But let us not forget that arresting lawyers, public interest lawyers, human rights lawyers, and human rights activists, you address, you arrest five lawyers and five activists. In effect, you are actually isolating populations of lakhs of people. Because these are their representatives. So by arresting these people, you're arresting and silencing and stripping away the <coughs> constitutional rights of whole populations. So, so um, when they <coughs> when they arrest, when they arrested people, accusing them of participating in the <coughs> Elgar Parishad, and Jignesha <coughs> says. It is a way of discrediting the rising <coughs> Dalit <coughs> aspirations. So, uh, <coughs> see, it's, it's difficult for uh, governments in the past, <coughs> the UP government, as well as the BJP. Oh God. <laughs> they need to call <coughs> Adivasis and Dalits who are act active, Naksas, because they also want to divide them. <coughs> it has been important for governments, both the Congress led UPA and now the BJP to disguise their attacks on Adivasis in Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh and Chhattisgarh and now in the case of the BJP, their attack on Dalits as an attack on Maoists or Naxals. This is because unlike in the case of Muslims who have almost been erased from political arithmetic, all political parties who have an eye on those constituencies as potential vote banks. The arrest of these 10 people, 3 lawyers and 7 well-known activists also serves to cut a whole population of vulnerable people of from a form of justice or representation. Because these were the representatives. When they arrested Dr. Binayak Sen, Professor Sai Baba stood up for him. When they arrested Sai Baba, Rona Wilson stood up for him. Surendra Garikil was his lawyer. When they arrested Rona and Gadgil, the others stood up from them. And so it goes. The vulnerable are being called off. The vociferous are being incarcerated. God help us to get our country back. Arun Dati Roy. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, you know, there are thousands of people, apart from these activists, there are thousands of people in jail across Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Andhra, people who don't have names, people who don't have lawyers, people who don't have press conferences. The lawyers, the, the forests have been cordoned off from lawyers gotten off from journalists. Earlier it was the Adivasi community who were being called Maoists. Now the Dalits are being included and anyone who supports them. So we do have a situation in which, as I said in a statement yesterday, it is a coup against the constitution. It is a very dire situation more potentially more dangerous than the emergency because the emergency was declared supposedly to implement law and order and implement the constitution although of course it was violating people of course it was violating people's civil rights but this situation is in order to overturn the constitution it is in order to declare that this is a hindu rashtra an upper caste hindu rashtra in which all minorities and everyone else who does not agree with this majoritarian point of view is criminalized. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.